2007, a man by the name of Jeff Wood wrote about a time he visited France touring the Chartres Cathedral. His account goes like this. I over the portals within the south transept of the 800-year-old Cathedral of Chartres in France spreads a great rose window 40 feet in diameter. At its center sits Christ, while immediately around him orbit eight angels and symbols for the four evangelists, each enclosed within a circle of stained glass and beyond them orbit the 24 elders of the book of Revelation, each also within its own bejeweled circle, for a total of 36 orbiting circles of blue, red, gold, purple, and white. It's enough to make your head spin. Well, nor is that gigantic wheel of color the only thing to enchant you in that soaring wing of the cathedral, because below it rise five more long and narrow windows, the central one featuring Mary, while the other four show images of the evangelists Luke and Matthew, John and Mark in that sequence. Now, if you look closely at the windows of the four gospel writers, you'll notice something amusing. All four appear almost boyish in size, sit on top of the shoulders of a tall prophet of the Old Testament. Luke on the shoulder of Jeremiah, Matthew on Isaiah's, John on Ezekiel's, and Mark on Daniel's. The four major voices of the New Testament ride piggyback on the four major voices of the Old, just the way a dad might lift a small child on his shoulders. Now, why would those artists do something as playful as that? Well, it wasn't playful. They wanted to make a serious point, namely that the Gospels build on the wisdom and vision of the Old Testament. Quite often, our experience of the Christmas season loses its sight of the larger narrative that brought on the birth of the Messiah. We ought not forget that the Christ was prophesied many centuries before the events actually occurred, that Jesus is the hinge upon which the entirety of the Testaments hangs. Everything in the Old Testament points toward his arrival, and everything in the New Testament is because he's here. More than that, though, is the importance and severity of the historical context in which Jesus was born. The Jews existed in a time which was foretold by the prophet Daniel that was under Roman rule. For the most part, they viewed this Roman occupation as a time in which they needed rescue. The prophecies of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel were heard in eager expectation that God would once again be their deliverer. New Testament scholar David Burge talks about two possible choices that exist when people groups experience seemingly hopeless situations. The first is to live in despair as ones without any hope. Uh, maybe you fight in anger. Maybe you give up. This is our plight. This is how it is. But then he talks about a second choice that we see with God's people under the thumb of Roman rule. They double down on the predictions of the prophets. He says, they embedded in the historical thinking of God's people in Judaism is the belief that God will step in and rescue us. He goes on to call this the kernel of the Bible, the peace that heats up and pops throughout. God as deliverer is recognized in the story of the Exodus and sees fruition in the Christmas nativity. We read in Matthew's account these words. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now it is important that we learn from humble people like Joseph and Mary, who heard the prophet and believed, but also lived knowing it will occur. The reason we can call this the Advent is because Jesus indeed showed up. But his appearance also points to him coming again. You see, the first Noel is significant because it provides purpose and chaos. When you're overwhelmed, where do you turn? I once had a friend who couldn't sleep at night. She suffered from genuine insomnia. Her mind would not relax nor rest, and her body would not respond appropriately. In her frustration one night, or really early one morning, she posted about her frustration. I simply cannot sleep. It is maddening. Well, in social media's infinite wisdom, many non-medical experts began providing her with their advice. Turn off your electronics, some said. 
Go to bed with soft music, others advised. Some recommended some remedies while others recommended alcohol. One person even said, close your eyes and don't open them until you fall asleep. However, in the midst of dozens and maybe even hundreds of comments, one person simply said, go to God. How often do you follow that advice? When life is chaotic, when it seems like it doesn't make sense, do you go to God? The Apostle Peter says similar things in his first letter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him. Jesus was sent as rescuer, our deliverer. The Lord was and is aware of our condition and our circumstances. The first advent gives us sound reason to believe in the second as our Savior will rescue us at the right time. My encouragement for you is to humbly consider turning over your despair and your discouragement to the one who is more than able to save. The prophets haven't let us down yet, nor do we have reason to believe that they will. We will see you next time for In Every Season, Advent. Until then, be blessed.